Try to remember back, if you can, when your child lost his or her first baby tooth. It was probably a traumatic experience for your son or daughter. That beautiful angelic smile reduced to a mouthful of uneven gaps. But before long, your child understood that those teeth had to go in order for the stronger, more resilient adult teeth to come in. Think back to grammar school. We might have believed that girls were yucky, boys were gross, but now, as we mature, we discover that girls are pretty nice and boys really aren't that bad to be around. As a child, we made a, might have hated school, or at least certain subjects in school. But as adults, we came to realize that the math that perhaps we hated, or that English essay that we wrote under duress, or the history we despised are critical, critical to helping make our way in our profession to make sense out of our world. And as we grow up, our dreams themselves all change. At some point, we accept the fact that we may never be a shortstop for the Indians, and we concentrate instead on becoming the best doctor, or the best lawyer, or the best teacher, or the best building contractor we can be. Our dreams of starring on Broadway or in movies is forgotten once we realize the hard work demanded if we are to become the kind of parent, the kind of citizen, the kind of human being we want to become. You and I know that unless we grow beyond our childhood understandings and images, we will never fully be able to live our lives to the fullest and most enriching sense. In today's gospel on this feast of the Trinity, Jesus is Jesus challenges Nicodemus to move beyond the incomplete, the childlike images of God, and to grow into an, an adult faith that recognizes the God who is operative out of the unfathomable love that has no satisfaction in vengeance or retribution against an unfaithful creation. The God who constantly takes the initiative to be reconciled with us, despite ourselves and our stepping at a distance. The God who is not removed from his creation, but who is constantly present in every act of love and compassion and forgiveness. Today's solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity invites you and me as people of faith once again to rediscover to rediscover the many ways in which the love of our God is revealed in our lives. The life, the life that God's Spirit breathes into our souls in the everyday wonderful work of creation formed by the hands of our God and in the love of God dwelling among us in the love of family and friends. You and I, as people of faith, we reflect upon the mystery of the solemnity that we celebrate today. Our God in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we ask God, help us, help us to move into a complete, a more mature sense of God so that our understanding of God, the Creator, the Redeemer, the Sanctifier, the God who is always with us affirming us and simply inviting us always, always to place our faith in him, to believe in him, and to recognize that he has come to redeem us and not to condemn us, challenging us simply to allow that relationship of love to be at the very foundation of the way in which we live, so that you and I, in living that life faithful to God, Father, Son, and Spirit, you and I may help others to place faith in God because they recognize the implications, the impact of the faith that we have in God and how it sustains us, how it keeps us balanced, how it keeps us focused, 
so that everything that we do allows ourselves to be rooted in the love God has for us and in our response to the gift of that love, the gift of that grace.